Google removed the popular Active Edge feature from its latest phone, the Pixel 5, but I'm gonna show you how to bring it back next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by MySudo. Take back control of your privacy with MySudo and download the MySudo app today from the App Store or Google Play. Go to mysudo.com slash twit to learn more. Hello, welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. Back in 2017, let's go back in time, you may remember the Pixel 2 series of devices brought some really interesting new features. One of those was a feature called Active Edge, and it went something like this. You had your device in your hand, you squeeze the frame of the device, and what do you know, Google Assistant is summoned. And it actually, it was a pretty popular feature. It actually lasted through the Pixel 4 and 4 XL, which I also have and was just showing off. But... We're at a different point in time with Google's hardware right now. Their current lineup, the 4A, the 4A 5G, and the Pixel 5 do not support that feature anymore. They just don't have it baked in there. But there is a way to make it work. Now, the feature that's critical for making this work uh, on these devices is the barometer, how, and which all three devices have. However, the 4A and the 4A 5G I could not get this feature working with those two phones. So we're going to set those aside. So this is purely if you want to bring back Active Edge on your Pixel 5. It's totally possible. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. What you want to look for is an app in the Play Store called Side Squeeze Plus by Pocket Developers. Now, the Play Store, as you'll see, uh, the page for this app bills this as an app that's designed to bring squeeze and press gestures to Samsung Galaxy devices. It also has other expanded features for Samsung Galaxy devices specifically. But as I'm going to show you, it actually does work on other devices, including, like I said, the Pixel 5. Definitely a your mileage may vary sort of thing. So do keep that in mind. So first, when you install this app, you're going to need to jump through a small amount of hoops in order to allow it to work. Yes, you're going to have to grant accessibility permissions. Uh, you'll also want to opt out of battery optimization. Thankfully, the app kind of walks you through this stuff. Uh, this is so that the service can run in the background without being removed automatically by the system. Uh, though, do note that this could impact battery uh, in the long run. So kind of be aware of that. And finally you can issue an ADB command, which actually opens up some special actions, which include expanded criteria within the app, things like detecting if the home screen is open, and more actions that tie into things like immersive mode and auto rotation. But do note, that whole process is not necessary in order to get this to work. It's gonna work fine if you don't do the ADB process. Uh, so if that intimidates you, totally not a problem. You just won't have the full extension of the suite of capabilities uh, that you get when you actually do this process. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So here I have my phone with my computer. I actually already have the platform tools installed on my computer. I've talked about it on a number of episodes prior. Uh, so I'm going to plug my phone into my laptop. And next on my device, I'm going to go into settings, about phone, and then tap build number seven times. This is to open up developer options capabilities like we've done before. And then back out into settings, system, advanced, and developer options ultimately. Now scroll down in developer options and we'll find that very familiar at this point, USB debugging feature. I'm gonna go ahead and toggle that on. And once that's done, because my phone is plugged into my computer and USB debugging is activated, I'll be asked if I want to grant this access between my computer and the phone, which of course I do. That's gonna enable me to do what I'm gonna do next. On the computer, I'm gonna open up my terminal program and navigate to the platform tools folder. And this is the folder that has the ADB tools inside that I've talked about before. I always like to do the command 
pound slash ADB space devices and then enter in order to make sure that it sees the phone connected to the computer, which it does. Uh, so then I'm going to issue the command that actually makes the change that we're looking for here. It's dot slash ADB space shell space SH space slash SD card slash grant. And then I'll hit enter. And as you can see, this sends the permission to the phone. You can actually see the phone kind of wake up and then jump me right into Side Squeeze Plus uh, into the main menu there. And that's how we know we are ready to roll. This episode of Hands-On Android is brought to you by MySudo. You want privacy for your daily digital activities? That's why you need MySudo. With MySudo, you can quickly create different profiles called sudos. Each one can have a working phone number, email, virtual card, and private browser. Whether you've been hacked, tracked, had identity theft, were scammed, spammed, or just want to prevent these things from happening, the MySudo app will mitigate the common risks that we all face today. Download the MySudo app today from the App Store or Google Play. Go to mysudo.com slash twit to learn more. Take back and control your personal information with the MySudo app and download it today. All right, so on my Pixel 5, first thing that we need to do here is calibrate the app. We want to calibrate what's going on here. So you just tap to calibrate. And uh, you are given some tips so you can read through those just in case you get lost. But here's the gist. You're going to want to hold the phone in your hand and you can hold it in either direction uh, that you choose. But when you're holding it initially, you want to hold it without any firm grip at all. And while you've got it there, you just tap start and you wait. And this is detecting the baseline to kind of compare against. And then once it has that baseline and you're cued, give one firm squeeze on the frame and then wait. And then it will cue you again for two more times. And basically what's happening here is it's learning the range within uh, the pressure that actually the barometric pressure that you're squeezing to trigger an action. So it'll make some adjustments. It's going to want to determine an optimal value offset so that this feature will work when you want it to and not when you don't. Uh, I'll go ahead and accept the changes here and repeat the process if I need to so that everything's set ideally. And then once it is, I can head out to the main menu and begin to set up some of the actions, which is the magic. And let's face it, we're here to replicate Active Edge, so let's do that first. So I'm going to toggle on single squeeze. This is how it was on my Pixel 4 XL. And then I'm going to toggle on primary action while screen is on. And this is to tell the app what to do when I squeeze once and the display happens to be on. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull down the menu and you can see there's a whole lot of options in here. I'm going to scroll to find launch default voice assistant. And now I'm going to test it out. I'll squeeze the phone. Uh, on the frame, and sure enough, as you can see, Assistant is fired off. It's kind of like magic. I can even feel the haptic kick uh, when the command is triggered that I'm used to feeling. It just buzzes for me. Now, I have encountered a few times when it didn't work with every squeeze. Um, a restart fixed that for me, or you might just need more calibration if you end up uh, in that situation. But back into the app, you can actually assign different actions for double triple and quadruple squeezes, and also longer durations of squeeze options. And within the action assign menu, you can find a toggle for more options that really give variability depending on contexts of the device. So for example, a double squeeze could navigate me to the home screen unless the device happens to be off and then it will actually turn on the flashlight on the back of the phone, uh, which is really kind of neat. Two different contexts for the same, uh, same action, essentially. A lot of customization to be had. Now you'll also find in the app a feature called screen press. Uh, I couldn't actually get this to work with a Pixel 5, which is no surprise. This was built with Galaxy devices in mind. So not everything in this app is going to work for you as well. The plus section is filled with customizations designed for Galaxy devices. But the analyzer section is actually really good for getting a visual representation of the phone's barometer reading as relates to the squeeze trigger to when you squeeze the phone. What does that barometer change? What does it look like? It's a good place to turn if you need to troubleshoot things. And finally, 
you will see that there's a persistent notification showing the Side Squeeze Plus service running. And this kind of just annoys me, but <laughs> it's there for a reason. It actually shows you if there's an error in use. For example, if you're tilting the device too far down and you have that setting set up, um, squeezing while it's tilted down, you're going to get a notification that shows device angle too low. You're outside of the threshold. And so that's how you know. But if you're like me and you want that notification to go away entirely and you don't mind missing out on those messages as a trade-off for a cleaner notification pane, just do this. Swipe the notification slightly to reveal the setting button there and tap that. And from there down below, you can just tap to turn off the notifications and that will hide it from view going forward. So keep in mind this app was designed with Samsung Galaxy devices in mind. It's Awesome that it does work on the Pixel 5, but if your phone has a barometer in it and it's not one of those devices, uh, it's still worth checking out. Install it and see if it works. The 4A and the Pixel 4A 5G do have barometers, but I could not get it to calibrate properly. So it was always firing off when I didn't want it to. So it just kind of seemed unusable on those devices. But for whatever reason, it totally works on the Pixel 5 and you can have active edge back. Thanks to Side Squeeze Plus. Uh, it is free, but there's a two $2.99 upgrade inside the app. Support your devs. Uh, send me your emails, your tips, your tricks, your ideas for the show at hoa at twit.tv. And I appreciate it when you do that. And you can find the show at the show page, twit.tv slash hoa. That is where you can find all the different ways that you can subscribe, the different podcatchers, as well as link out to YouTube and subscribe there. Thanks so much for watching. Big thanks to John Ashley for editing each and every week. And thanks to you for following this show. We'll see you next time on Hands on Android. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, host at Twit TV. Got a question for you. Have you gotten tired of how bad your photos are looking every time you post them to Instagram? Better yet, have you gotten yourself a new camera and you can't quite figure out why the images just don't look that good? Well, I have a solution for you. This is my show, Hands On Photography. Each and every Thursday, I sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor. So subscribe today at twit.tv hop to learn more.